Tyron Woodley. Uh, Tyron, in the past you've said, you know, training for Wonder Boy and training for a guy like Damian Maya was harder because they're specialists. They're very odd, you know, kind of unique fighters. Uh, obviously, Darren Till is an amazing fighter, but was it easier to train for Darren Till than it was for maybe those fighters because he's not as, you know, quote unquote, specialized? <clears throat> I would say it's easier, you know, sometimes. You know, as fighters, we get we get we get trapped into loving hitting the mitts, and we love to spar, and we love to do those things. And with Damian Maya and Wonder Boy, it forced me in a position where I had to really, really um, get into the skill set. I had to really learn what they were doing, why they were doing it, and then I had to spar. So I didn't get as much time. This fight, obviously, I'm fighting the guy that you know has been known to spar a lot, and you know he he, he fights that way. And it's a very similar training camp that I had when I was first coming up. So it was kind of actually fun and refreshing because I enjoy sparring to get back in there and get some heavy rounds in there. And it was it was a different type of training camp where I can actually use more tools and I can actually put myself in different situations that in, in the past camps it was heavily um, defensive to jiu-jitsu positions or takedowns or looking for openings. that I had to be a lot more patient. Um, you know, when you're fighting against two guys that are known to be strikers, you know, I think that's going to make the, the fight a different pace fight. I was too, I was too finicky. He's too back and forth, and you know I ain't about to sign no contract with nobody that I don't think gonna show up, or you know it's gonna give me a bunch of hassle and back and forth and this and that. Like he want, he want to go back and forth on Twitter more than anything, and it's like I'm not. Look, bro, I'm working. Like don't fucking bother me while I'm working. Like quit fucking tweeting me and shit. Like I'm not going I'm not about to go sit here and go back and forth with you if you want me then, you know, there's two or three people that you got to go through to get to me. I make myself very hard to reach for a reason. You know what I mean? I'm trying to work. I'm trying to, you know, there's there's things that, that I'm trying to do that are more long-term than what these guys are thinking about. Your preference is Gagey, Al, I like or, the or Gagey. someone else? Gagey? I like the Gagey. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the, I think that's the one I'm leaning towards. Do you think can talk him into fighting? Because he said he wanted to take some time off after fighting four times Gagey. in 13 months. I mean, Gagey wants to fight. I mean, Gagey, uh, you know, Gaethje don't give a fuck. I know. I I just know him even personally. He's been around Vegas a couple times, you know. And uh, for Darren, what do you think is is the key way to to, to fight Tyron Woodley and make this the fight that you want it to be? And that's my uh, question. Thank you. I just think I'll, I just think pressure, but like a different type of pressure. Guys think that the the pressure title, like, and they did not worry. They, they tried to give him pressure, but they're not worried about what he's going to get back because he's counter. He, yeah, he's got powerful hands, but he knows how to counter. So when you're throwing them punches, he's waiting for the counter. So it's, you know, it's about getting in and out, making it that type of fight. And, you know, it, um, it, it is what it is. It's, that's, that's what it's about. It's about me imposing my will on Tyron and, and Tyron imposing his will on me. But I just feel like, different type of pressure because if you give them the type of pressure that a lot of these other you know strikers have they, 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 they lunge in you know you know what i mean and, and and that's where he gets them at the big counter so that, that's what i've seen anyway And the other thing, the other thing, Nick as well, is that because he didn't make weight. You think, think about this for as an example. If he'd have had a really, really tough weight cut in Liverpool, but he'd have made weight, I would be more concerned that he was going to miss weight in this next weigh in. Given the fact that he did, he was a few pounds over in, against Wonder Boy, now I feel like the pressure's on his shoulders even more to make weight, which means he's going to be even more on point with his diet. It's, it's an additional motivating factor because he did miss weight in the last one. And the other thing is, well, he knows in this one that, yeah, I mean, you know. If he weighs 171, he'll get the fight. But if he wins, he won't get the belt. And that that's the silver lining here. That's that's what he's here for. So to to you know to to not have that bit of cake and bit of pe- a bit of pizza every now and then during training camp, it's much easier to motivate yourself when there's a gold belt around the, around your waist at the end of it. I think it's a weird one because <clears throat> obviously Tyron Woodley feels very confident that he's going to get this fight won, and he's he's been watching Darren Till on the rise. He's known 
you know, I'm sure when you're a champion, you, you, your radar's on and you're kind of picking out guys in the division as they're rising up. And I'm sure that Tyron Woodley was just as uh, just as interested as everybody else when uh, when the Wonder Boy fight was made and how that played out because obviously Woodley's fought Wonder Boy twice to, to you know to two very close fights. So to see Darren Till perform against someone that you've spent 50 minutes in the octagon with, it, it's, it's, it gives you a good measure of what they're capable of. And Darren Till's definitely capable of uh, of being a world champion. I do think Tyron Woodley feels very confident in the skills that he brings to the table. And to be honest, the two things that he does, he does very, very well. And that's the, the overhand right and the, and the blast double. He's a very, very powerful individual. And, and if Darren Till does kind of find himself in a bit of a standoff up against the fence, that's going to be dangerous for him. Um, I, I think I think the thing that's going to surprise Tyron Woodley is the pressure that he's under with Darren Till. Because Wonder Boy is much more of a counter fighter. So when he was on the front foot against Woodley and Woodley was backed up against the fence, there, there wasn't the urgency to to put hands on him like Darren Till will have because Wonderboy obviously was waiting for Tyron Woodley to make the first move. And I think, you know, with this one, Darren Till is going to be the one that's going to be more aggressive. So it's going to force uh, Tyron Woodley to work. It's definitely going to be his, his most difficult fight purely because he's going to have to work a lot harder than he has done before. We can, we're, we're on Connor, so we can talk about Con- Connor. But there's still beef between him and Floyd. Actually, Floyd's like, hey, you can come train at my space. You know, come come to, you know, the Mayweather camp c- club in, in Vegas. And he was actually a really nice compliment. He was complimenting Connor. He wants to come to the fight. Okay. And then Connor was like, fuck the Mayweathers. That's, that was his response. Wait, but he, they did this no, on, it was, uh, was this on Twitter? Fuck the Mayweathers. Yeah. Is this on Twitter? This was on Twitter. And, and he says there's still beef between him and Floyd. Yeah. He's respect to Roger and He's Floyd Sr., but then it was probably looks like, hey, if I ever get to fight him again, let me not act yeah, like was, we're too buddy buddy. It was probably that type of. Yeah, but listen, he's a smart motherfucker. He's smart as hell. God is smart. I listen. I I I, have, I don't really. To be honest, though, I don't give a shit if they. I don't want to see that again. I'm sure no, a lot I don't of people. Need, might, I don't need I don't to see it fuck. again. Unless I, unless the impossible happens and he gets in oh, the octagon. I don't. That's never going to happen. Well, but the, if he. Listen, if he, if he takes out Khabib, there's, they're, they're building statues of this guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they, they, that will be the... They, they should just make this movie right there. I then, think he has you know to beat I mean? him for his own legacy because then he will stop all the questions and doubters about people saying that he never fought an amazing wrestler. So for his own career, and because he also d- never defended the ti- those titles, anybody who's ever had anything to say about Conor will have to quiet themselves down just a little bit if he beats Khabib. Uh, my first question is for Darren. Uh, Darren, last month you uh, you got in a little hot heat when you said uh, that you didn't care about your pregnant wife and your child. Uh, obviously, we all know that that was taken out of context. You were misinterpret uh, misinterpreted. Um, unfortunately, a lot of fans have turned against you because of that. Do you have anything to say to those fans that kind of try to bring them back? <laughs> I mean, I just, I just said what, I, what I was feeling, in the, you know, in the moment. We from Liverpool, we speak a bit different, you know. I speak with a, a lot of meaning, and it's just, it's just not how it is right now. It's just the only, the only focus is, is fighting on September eighth. Uh, maybe it could come out wrong, but I'm not apologising or trying to win back any fans. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just the way it is. Every fighter and people who, who've been through it know what I meant. You know. My girlfriend, she follows me around 24 hours a day. I see my daughter on the night on FaceTime. So I know what I meant, and people close to me know what I meant. So that's all that matters, really, to be honest. Uh, Dan, a big storyline in this fight is your last fight, you missed weight by four pounds. You knew you were going to be asked about it. Um, there was a video came out of you cutting weight. It looked terrible. Um, what changes have you made to make sure that you make weight this time and that you don't? kill your body like you did in the last fight just just drop me weight earlier usually I, you know I'm so experienced I've cut, I've cut weight you know a bunch of times and then I have to make weight and I I do leave a lot of weight to cut for the for the week of the fight so this time I've got me weight lower so going into fight week you know it's not not going to be much of a struggle that's 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 the plan and that's that we're still on target we're still on plan you know I don't know how many days without, but nine days or something, everything seems to be going good. My weight is, is light, so I'm a, I'm a happy person about my weight. Uh, 